Have you ever bought a figure and then instantly regretted it the moment you looked at it out of the box? What's going on guys, Ryan with Jedi Patrol, back with another video today. I, 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 I've got a lot of figures and over the years I've unboxed a lot of figures, whether it's Hot Toys or third party companies or whatever. And uh, I can't think of one, I cannot think of one figure other than the one we're going to talk about today that I open it and I was just like, damn, like I regret buying this. But it finally happened. I regret buying this figure. Now, some of you guys may love it, and that's fine. These are my thoughts, my channel, if that works. I just give you my views. Um, I regret buying this. Honestly, dude, it, I'm, we're going to talk about it. I'll show it to you, but it's the uh, Infamous Toys Shadow Void is what we're talking about, which is essentially Proxima Midnight uh, from the Black Order, uh, Thanos Children, the whole thing. Uh, I have the Ebony Maw which is a beautiful figure. I never did a video on it, but I do like the figure. I have it over there with Thanos. Um, and they recently released uh, Corvus Glaive, and I can't remember what name they made up for him, uh, under the Infamous Toys, but it's under Toys Battalion. So it, Toys Era is Infamous Toys, but they're also Toys Battalion. I don't know why they're releasing the same set of figures under different company names. It's a weird, I, I don't understand it. But that aside, that aside, um, I got this figure. I was excited for it so I could build the Black Order and have a cool display. And then I unboxed this on a, um, uh, in my Facebook group, the, the Patreon Facebook group, the Death Star went live and I unboxed it on there. And I immediately regretted it. And I was like, man, this sucks. So spoiler warning, I don't like this figure, but I'm gonna show it to you anyways. All right guys, we've got the Shadow Void out of the box right here to check her out. Uh, AKA Proxima Midnight, if you were unfamiliar with this character at all, and you might be because it's a very strange looking character. Now, I, in the past, have been a pretty good fan of Toys Era. They did The Fiend, which is the Green Goblin. They did Heimdall, that figure's great. The Ebony Maw, I think is a good figure. They've done some good stuff. Uh, this one's just not, not one of them. So we'll, we'll talk about why. Let's just look at this figure as it sits right now. No poses, just standing up. I took it out of the box, threw it on the table. The head looks miniature. It's like they took a 1 12th scale head and put it on a 6 scale figure. And then Proxima Midnight evidently is wearing stilts. The legs go on and on and on and on. They, the legs never end. The hands are tiny. The head is tiny. The legs are ridiculously large. It, it's a very freakishly looking figure. It just, it just, the proportions don't work. So... That out of the way, let's take a look at the actual suit and then we'll kind of dive in. You guys can let me know your thoughts. You know, am I overreacting here? I don't I don't think I am. I spent my money on this. Uh, but there's our head sculpt. I think it's fine. Uh, other than the scale, and, and I think it's just, I, I think it is out of scale. I think the head is out of scale uh, with the body. Um, just a touch. Uh, it's one of those uh, half, we'll have it spinning around a little bit. It's a half sculpted, half rooted hair deal that uh, Toys R likes to do. And I don't really have a problem with that at all. Um, the suit material is very familiar. So I don't really have an issue with that. Uh, nice gold paint going down the armor on the uh, left arm. And then here's where it goes all kinds of wrong. Here's the legs and they keep going and then they keep going. And we're still, we're still, we're still going, we're still going until boom, we finally hit the bottom of the leg. So here's my main issue with this is honestly, it's just the proportions of it don't work. Uh, they just, they just don't work. Uh, you guys can see it for yourself right here. I just don't think they work at all. So that for me, like you can get, maybe the head sculpt's not perfect. Maybe the articulation's not you know, hundred percent when it, the proportions look like the, it's like the wish version of a third party figure. Like it's pretty, it's pretty bad. So somebody had to approve this. I don't know who now the back of the figure, it looks fine. I mean, obviously it's the same proportions, uh, but some of you will probably want to see what the heck the back of the figure looks like. And it, she does have this pretty cool little blue, black, gray hair thing going on. I kind of dig that. So I thought it makes sense to go ahead and throw up 
Uh, another female figure, this is going to be Hela from Thor Ragnarok, one of my favorite Marvel movies, probably is my favorite Marvel movie, although the Far From Home uh, or No Way Home was actually pretty good as well. So uh, we've got Hela on the right, we've got the uh, Shadow Void Approximate Midnight on the left, and I kind of want to take a look at some details on this. So let's, let's first take a look at the hip on this figure. Uh, so there's the hip on our Proxima Midnight. There's the placement of the hip. And if I go directly across, where's the hip placement on our uh, Hella? Well, it's that's pretty much her upper torso. So there's the hip placement. But then look up and look at the size of the head. I'm not even talking about like the, um, you know, the, the headdress, if you will. But look at these two side by side. The Shadow Void head is smaller even though her shoulders are a straight up it, over an inch higher than Hela. And these are the proportion of things I'm talking about. Like her head is underscaled for the body, right? Uh, and that, that's not even taken into account the, uh, the ridiculously long legs that already are long. And then they have ankle extenders in it. Uh, so that's, that's a thing. So, you know, it, it's, it's got a, it's got some problems, right? But there they are. I mean, I think the like the suit on the or the fabric material, the neoprene-ish material that Toys Air likes to use on the Proxima Midnight, I think it's fine. I don't have any issues with that. I just have issues with the proportions. I don't think they make sense. The hands on this figure are too small for the figure. They don't make a lot of sense. Uh, and other than that, it's just not a whole lot of fun. But I'm going to break out. We'll break out Ebony Maw here and Pose them up and see what we can come up with. All right, here we go, guys. We've got Thanos in the middle. We've got Ebony Maw on the right, and we've got our Proxima Midnight or Shadow Void on the left because I knew somebody would want to see, like, these guys all posed up together and see what they look like. I got to say, like, the coloring of the suits on both Ebony Maw and the uh, Proxima Midnight, both of them look great with the Hot Toys Thanos. There's no denying that. The colors, the muted colors, the grays, the blacks, uh, the gold patina, if you will, uh, all those look... Uh, fairly good with those, but I just can't get over <laughs> how uh, how odd the uh, proportions are on this Proxima Midnight. Um, just kind of you know zooming down for just a second, and just to give you an idea of uh, scale and, and uh, size comparison between these guys. Uh, Thanos obviously is a good bit larger, no issues with that. So we're getting a Corvus Glaive. If we get a Cole Obsidian, like that might be enough reason to keep. This Proxima Midnight, even though she's not that great of a figure, she's not very expensive. So, you know, maybe maybe I keep them and just say, screw it, you know, whatever. Uh, this is not a figure I will ever pose again, I don't think, uh, unless uh, until we get another video to do, or, you know, we'll see about that. Um, it's just, you know, you hate buying stuff and then just being straight up disappointed with it uh, when it arrives. I mean, yeah, you just... I don't know. I'm sure everybody's had that feeling at some point, but this is generally, uh, I can be honest with you, the first figure I've ever opened the box and been like, man, I wish I hadn't bought that. So everybody asks me all the time, you know, what figure do you regret buying? Uh, I can honestly say this one. This really is just, just that, I don't know, just that one. Anyways, uh, I'm just probably another video you were expecting, but I wasn't going to make a video on this figure at all because I was just so disappointed in it. But then I was like, you know what? You know, you know, somebody might want to hear my thoughts on this before they make a purchase. Maybe, you know, decide for yourselves. But I don't like it straight up. So I'm hoping Corvus Glaive is better. I hope if they do a Call of Obsidian, oh my God, that would be awesome. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. As always, click what you like. Maybe not this particular figure. See you next time.